Hello and welcome back to another episode of Henry Weston's Old Mate, the podcast. Uh, I am your host, Stuart, of course, in the UK, but my three guests are not in the UK. I have got some wonderful women of turf from over in the US. Uh, I am joined by Kelly Lynch, uh, Sally Jones and Rene Gaia, Gaia, sorry, um, and they were all working the US Ladies Open at Pine Needles last week. Anyone who was on the Twitter app last week couldn't have helped but bump into these wonderful women and the wonderful job they were doing. And I'm lucky enough to have them come join me to have a chat about that experience and their experience within the turf industry from a female perspective. So, uh, Kelly, Kelly Lynch, I'll come over to you first. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, could you just give us a, a brief introduction, a personal one and a professional one, if you'd be so kind? Oh, for sure, Stuart. And it was it was a thrill when I when I got your text over this week. Uh, of course, there's a lot of safe deprivation going on, so <laughs> I had to read it twice. And I'm like, oh no, this is this is cool. So we can't thank you enough for reaching out to all of us. As you're going to find, um, some of us have lost our voices, and we're we're having a little bit of a recovery side um, from returning home. Uh, but yes, I'm Kelly Lynch. I Personally, um, my journey has been unique in terms of this industry. I'm actually a class A PGA golf professional by trade. Uh, I turned pro probably 35 years ago. Had I not played, my other passion was to be on the, the turf side. And so ironically, all these years later, about eight years ago now, I was recruited by a seed company, a grass seed company. And when I say I'm from Oregon and I sell grass, people are like, sweet. I'm like, not the kind you smoke, <laughs> the kind you play golf on. Okay, a little bit different. Uh, but I actually have the privilege now to work for one of my all-time mentors and, and just um, a huge role model for, for me. Her name is Crystal Rose Fricker. I went for, to work for a pure seed about four years ago. And that's how I became involved in this group because uh, when, when we were looking for women to participate in the uh, 76 U.S. Women's Open Championship at the Olympic Club, Troy Flanagan's vision was to bring a group of female volunteers forward. I just happened to know where a whole bunch of them were, including these two, uh, because high fives that I had given over the years um, at, in the role that I play now. So, um, well, personally, I'm just a big fan. Uh, I love uh, uplifting people. I have an amazing wife. Her name is Marty. And she's the one who made me brave to go be this and to do this. Uh, and what I get to do and the, and, the, and the privilege is the more women that I can uplift and really the more people that I can uplift. And I think we'll talk about that today. Yeah. Um, this happens to be our time, but most of us come from male dominated industries, myself included, which we love. We love all the guys and we love the, the opportunities that we have to work alongside them with them. This is just a unique one for us to lift each other up in the industry. And now we have this unique sisterhood, if you will, uh, and in and amongst all of our, our normal daily jobs uh, that we have this really neat connection all over the United States and really all over the world now. Yeah, uh, exactly. And that's um, you, the, the sisterhood, as you described it, the sort of camaraderie that I could feel just from sort of interacting and following all the tweets on Twitter it was very powerful actually and and that was sort of just uh, obviously not over there not f physically experiencing anything but I could tell there was a a real power and, and strength to your guys friendships uh through through turf and the turf industry so let's go to uh Rene next Rene Gaia um if you could just give us a, a personal and professional introduction again please Absolutely. Um, my name, as I said, is Renee Geyer. I am currently the golf course superintendent at Canterwood Golf and Country Club in Gig Harbor, Washington. So the top northwest corner of the United States. I'm up there. Um, I have recently transferred to this position. Previously, I was at Firestone Country Club in Akron, Ohio for about 13 years. So I've been around for a little while. Uh, very, very happy with where I am right now. But, uh, you know, went to turf school, did the whole thing, non-traditional path to turf school, spent three years of my life doing something completely different, vocal music education. You know, I thought I was going to be like a high school choir director and things like that. A lot of different reasons around the bend. I've realized I got to be outside. I got to do this for me. And that's what led me to, to the turf industry. So I was definitely a non-traditional 
path to 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 being on the golf course yeah. but one that i wouldn't change for for anything and wow. personally uh personally i'm really really lucky i too have an awesome wife you know we don't have any kids right now but we're looking to get some fur babies since the big move and so <laughs> you know life's all life's all good that way um, uh, i've got a dog yeah, that we, we've looked we're looking after over here i could send him over your way no problem or her uh... i'll babysit i'll babysit that's fine Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And congratulations on the recent move and sort of the new appointment. Um, Sally, you you make up the, the, the final sort of ball in this four ball, shall we say. Um, Sally Jones, if you'd be so kind as to introduce yourself to us as well, please. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm Sally Jones uh, from Benson, Minnesota in uh, the United States, obviously. Um, I have been in the industry for just over 25 years. Um, I've started when I was 15 working on our local golf course. Um, originally, I started picking the range uh, by hand with shake bags, walking the range and picking it up. And then eventually they asked if I would want to join the maintenance department. And I figured, why not? I'm here all the time golfing and doing whatever. So I uh, joined that up. And then uh, when I was supposed to find a career for an upcoming career fair, I figured, well, I don't know what else I want to do. So I'll look into this um, and kind of found a little bit of resistance. There wasn't a lot of people who knew how to uh point me in the right direction of this kind of field and so that kind of intrigued me a little more the fact that it wasn't a well-known uh career path for a lot of people um and then uh when i started looking at schools um uh, penn state was the farthest one from home so that is ultimately why i chose to go to penn state mm -hmm. i did their four-year program there while i was in school I did a couple internships in Minnesota and Colorado and I came back to Minnesota afterwards uh, for one year as a second assistant at a private country club there and then uh, one year later I got my per current position as superintendent at the uh, ripe age of 23 and I've been there for 19 years and I uh, became general manager in 2015 so I carry on uh, superintendent and the clubhouse general manager. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that is high praise, high profile, isn't it? Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and it will be wonderful to sort of pick your brains about that dual role almost sort of later on in the podcast, Sally. Um, let's start with last week then, guys. Uh, I, probably it all started a bit more before last week, didn't it? But um Kelly, you were running the Twitter account that I sort of contacted, your women in turf. Um, how, so talk to me about, it's not recruitment, is it? How did, how did you go about, or not you personally, but how did this wonderful group of women all get together um, at Pine Needles last week? Is it as, it's not as simple as sending emails out, is it? It's a long process. And when, when would that process of getting a team of all female volunteer staff for, one of the most high profile golfing events on, on the calendar, male or female, let's be honest. When, when does that start? Did it start as soon as it finished last year? Yeah. And, and just real quick to give a shout out, it's actually Sheila Schroeder who is, who set all that up for us. She's actually okay. a filmmaker out of the university of Denver and she volunteered herself and one of her assistants to come and they were embedded in uh, within us. They lived with us, they worked with us, they were there the whole time. And that's, uh, that's where we need to give the shout out because none of that content, the way it was driven and all of the uh, content that she was able to capture, would have, that wouldn't have happened because we were all working so hard this week. <laughs> um, so it's only, it's my, and she was the one that sent you to me then, so yes. Okay. So that's, that's a connection. And I do tend to be the, the lead on a lot of things in the, in the front of the house. The other person I have to mention is Kimberly Gard. She is uh, with Syngenta. And it really is because of Kimberly Gard that we're all sitting here talking today. She has worked absolutely tirelessly to continue this, um, this wave, if you will. And in a nutshell, it, it, it's, we have to go back to the US Women's Open at the Olympic Club last year. Troy Flanagan, who's their director there, 
wanted to have, you know, about five years in advance if you're going to play host to uh, a, a U.S. Women's Open championship. And during that time, Troy had a vision that what if he could bring a team of female volunteers to the forefront? What would that look like? And he moved mountain after mountain after mountain to get us all there. It was not an easy task. It was San Francisco, all closed down because of COVID and all the re regulations. And so uh, he would be another great one to have a conversation with uh, when you have time. So yeah. fast forward, Kimberly Gard, whom, whom I did not know prior to the open last year, she had a group of gals and somebody asked her if she knew me. At that time, she did not. And they said, call Kelly. She knows where they're at because I have traveled all over. I, I've high-fived all these gals. At a, we had our own secret, ceiling, secret grass ceiling society. Yeah. And we'd be at a trade show. We'd be somewhere visiting. Uh, and I'd watch a gal walk by and say, excuse me. I'd track her down and be like, how come I don't know you? You know, you should come and hang out with us. We have this after hours, we're going to have a grab a beer or, or, and, have a, and have a conversation. And so I had gathered these high fives, if you will, all over the country. And when Kimberly said, they said, you know where they are. I'm like, how many do you want? She's like, how many can you get? I'm like, how many do you want? And so that's kind of how we, we all we springboarded, right? And then as we all were able to connect uh, and just had an amazing time last year, uh, just another epic week in our lives. And so this year we were very thoughtful because we had, we already had experienced it and we wanted to continue this with David Fricti and he was in his crew. And I'm telling you, he had a crew of nine before we showed up and what the, that crew did and David's team did before we got there is unbelievable. And, and we all want you to know that we came alongside them to lift them up. This is just as much, if not more about them than it is about us. We might've come in on, on the 11th hour in the week of the tournament, but what they did over the last year plus to get ready for this event was really amazing. And to, to bond with them uh, and, and to have uh, brothers out there working together side by side with us was really the treat. So. Fast forward, uh, Kimberly decides, we, we're all talking and David's already decided he wants to bring us. And now with Kimberly's knowledge and having done this a year, we've all got together and we have kind of this pseudo uh, impromptu board at the moment. You're looking at three of them, uh, three of us that are sit on this board trying to make sure we drive this all forward. And so what we did is we brought half of the group. I think there were 16, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we called OGs that had been there last year. And then we brought a new generation that we call the new G's in this year. So that the goal of that 35 plus this year would be then at next year at Pebble Beach. And, and Bubba's already bringing us. He's, he, he was in at the Olympic club. He was ready for us to, to show. Um, and so the same will happen next year. We'll bring um, some OG's and some new G's and continue to build uh, that group and, and lift everyone up. And really the, the blessing was because Kimberly Gard was willing to take it all on. Uh, her, her talents in terms of organization and logistics and, and she's done this all. She also has a really big job with Syngenta. Like yeah. we all have yeah. big jobs, but it became a passion. Uh, and, and we wanna, we will uh, work tirelessly to, to continue to come alongside uh, our, our male counterparts and lift mm -hmm. each other up in the industry. Uh, uh, well said, and and as you touched on there, that that team of nine that you 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 girls came, ladies came along and supported. I mean, I where I am down at St George's, we had obviously the Open Championship last year that had been delayed, so we were sort of we had two years a team a team of sixteen. We fortunately had sixteen, but um, yeah, the work that goes in in the sort of it's not until two weeks before that sort of the extra help really starts turning up, and you are flat out uh and yeah you've got your full-time job and then you come home and you've got a household to try and manage the, the kids need picking up from school etc <laughs> etc et yeah well yeah so let's let's as you say kelly wonderful to highlight the efforts of that sort of core staff at pine needles itself renee um you're a superintendent yourself um so it's not as simple as see you later Guys, I'm heading off to heading off down, is it? Talk to me a little bit. Talk to us about, I want to know about your experience, but how it's, like I say, it's not a sim. you can't just get in the car, get on the plane and head down. You've got a, you know, you've got a lot to set up before you go. So can you just talk us about, to us, 
that last two or three days on your own site and then head down and tell us a little bit about, you know, your introduction uh, to Pine Needles and the rest of the gang. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the as you said, it's not just a, hey, I'm going to get up and get dropped off at the airport. I'm going to hop on the plane. And it's you, you can't just snap your fingers and make that happen. I know I was one of many uh, of the women last week. Uh, we were sort of sharing each other on WhatsApp, like, hey, guys, uh, the weather's going to be just right. I got to get this spray application out. Or And I, my, me personally, I was on a sprayer two more times than I had thought that I was going to be last week because <laughs> the, 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 the weather was right. The moment was right. The timing was right. So that week before I left, it was a little stressful. I'm not going to lie <laughs> because it also happened to be uh, the transition from May to June. So it was month end financials. It was budgetary considerations. It was payroll. I mean, it was all these things. It was like this perfect storm. So yeah, it wasn't just hop on the plane. There was planning and preparation. And I'm very, very, very blessed. I have a great assistant superintendent, Zach. Awesome dude. Uh, and then I've got a great staff. I don't have to hold their hands. Um, we, we work together, uh, but I, I don't babysit them. They're, they're very knowledgeable, very experienced in the golf course what has to happen on a daily basis? Where are we going? What are we doing? So it's a great team effort from that perspective. But some of the stuff that nobody wants to deal with, you know, the money, the office work, all that stuff, I sort of had to, to grind down and get all of that stuff uh, lined up so that I could, I could leave confidently knowing that everything was going to be just fine. And it helped me worry less. And of course, since I've been back, I mean, the golf courses, here you go, Kelly, this one's for you. Chef's yeah. kiss. The golf course is perfect. I mean, I couldn't have had a better entrance back into into the golf course this week than, than what I did. I couldn't be happier. They they rocked it. They rocked it. So that's, that was good. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, uh, as you would you know, as you would hope, but it's always it's always nice, isn't it, to come back to to know you're never going to come back to. Well, you hopefully you don't come back to a disaster, but it's lovely to return knowing that they've done what what you'd expect and hope they to do that they'd have done uh, and they're all professionals in their own right as you say aren't they highly skilled um sally um your superintendent gm of of your golf course um if you go away to somewhere like pine needles for for a week is it i dare i say is it uh it's not foot off the gas for you is it but it's certainly a different experience could you could you explain how going away from being the GM, you know, the, the umbrella on top of everyone below. And then how easy is it for you to, to switch into more of a, I don't know if team role is, is the right way, but you're, you may be not be quite as responsible as when you're at, at your home club. Is that, is that fair to say? How, how did, how did you find that? Yeah, I, I would say that is very fair to say. Um, I did have a conversation with David about this. Um, he made the comment on how we were so, um, willing to do stuff, willing to, um, able to see things that needed to get done and stuff. And I said, whoa, 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 you got to remember we're coming from a place where we have to be on top of things all the time, but from the moment we step on the property to the moment we leave. And we're coming to this place where we don't have that responsibility, where we can see, I mean, we still have that, that uh, thought of going back to that, but we don't have to. And so we're able to see, uh, maybe we should do this and just go the extra mile as far as what um, uh, a young person who hasn't been in a managerial role um, can see. And so I feel like we were able to come in and help him at a much better, not better, but um, easier way to make it easier for him, perhaps, um, or fill in in a position uh, we had uh, where someone had to leave and just everybody, anybody could have stepped into that position. No, no problem whatsoever. Um, but it is nice to be able to work on a golf course and not have that high responsibility that we do have at home. Um, we were able to enjoy our, each other's company. Um, anybody who saw us out working couldn't believe uh, we were 
in very high, high spirits. Um, we had fun, but we also got our stuff done and we did it well, I feel. And so we, but we were there trying to kill it for, for David and his crew. And I believe we did. Fantastic. I mean, and that's being, uh, drawing on my own experience from last year, um, sort of, I, I sit somewhere in the middle of our managerial structure at work. I'm a senior assistant greenkeeper. So there's three or four guys above me in the team of 16. Um, but we had volunteers come along, gave up their time last year to volunteer to help us. And I sort of found myself out on the driving range, trying to instruct sort of head greenkeepers, as you would call them superintendents. And it can be a, it can be a slightly interesting relationship if, if you're not sure uh, trying to organize people who, who don't necessarily know better, but I would look up to them in another sort of sense if, if, if they weren't at my home club. Um, so that was, you know, it's interesting that the way you described that, Sally, and it must have been a huge advantage for everyone involved to have you guys highly skilled volunteers all at the top of your game must have just been a huge advantage and it's wonderful to hear you say that you know you had fun and enjoyed each other's company but you were there to kill it you were there to do that job and get that golf course looking as fantastic and, and good as you possibly could um before we move into your own personal stories uh, we'll move away from pine needles in a bit but if if i could just ask you all could you share one highlight of the week for us all, Kelly, could I start? I mean, I'm sure there were many highlights. Is there anything you look back on with even more fondness than the whole experience? Was there one particular job, one particular person that you met, someone? What was your highlight, Kelly, of the week? Apart from the week itself, of course. Did you did you see Renee and Sally go, hmm? No. <laughs> how, how long you got, Stuart? Because well, you know who you're talking to. So I'll, I'll be brief, but I really, I think um, Tanya's quote was really the, the hit, hits a home run. A lot of them were strangers on Sunday and family by Friday. And right. I had a front row seat to all that because I'm a bridge builder anyway. I love to connect people. I love to, you know, get them in the same space at the right table at the right time and watch what happens. And so I think my privilege was to have a front row seat all week. I was there in a support role to Kimberly Guard, and I had I wore many hats that week. But more importantly, because I had the privilege to be everywhere all the time, I got to see it just unfold right in front of my face. And not not to mention David's team and all of them coming along, realizing that we're all one big team. But the the how we embrace each other. Uh, we're obviously from all over the country. We only get to see each other at certain places and times. We all have big jobs, but you see us all here. We we see each other. We just light up, and yeah. and I think that's that's the gift that we have. We're not alone in this industry. We have an, a very very rich sisterhood that is coming forward, and it's not that we want to be isolated to that. It's just the fact that. Um, that you walk in a room full of guys and you're one of the guys, right? It's fine. But to walk in a room and there's two or three or four or five or 30 more women, it's a very different experience. And I think that's the privilege that we've had these last couple of opens um, that we get to be a part of the team, but we also have each other there lifting each other up together. Fantastic. Uh, well said, Kelly. So yeah, uh, I, I can't add anything to that. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, Renee, uh, would you be able to isolate a, a highlight of the week for us? Or is it just that group spirit and that coming together? Is it the same for you? I think uh, there it's obviously there's the overriding, you know, level of, wow, look what we just got to do. Look, look where we just got to be the crew that we got to help, the superintendent, the director of agronomy, all those people, we got to be their support staff. And like Sally said, we had a good time doing it. Yeah. It was sort of a nice step away. I mean, my entire responsibility for the week was to make sure that I set pins straight and painted cups. I didn't have to think about the budget. I didn't have to think about payroll. I didn't have to think about anything else. I got to concentrate on one awesome job. And for me, that was sort of a, a highlight in and of itself that I got to focus on this one thing. And uh, one of my counterparts on the other nine, Jill, and we got to like almost nerd out together, you know, like how detailed can we get? How good can we make it look? And I think that was a highlight for me 
because like Kelly said, I don't get to see these women except for in very special times, you know, like this or Zooms or something like that. So that that was a really that was a really nice thing that we could really immerse ourselves in the specific tasks that we were given and do them to the absolute highest level that we could possibly do because I didn't have to worry about what Kelly was doing and I didn't have to worry about what Sally was doing over there on the other nine holes. I was concentrated on me, which was great. And then I will say the other side of it is uh, the highlight for me. I was not a part of Olympic last year. Um, I, I due to renovations going on at my old property and the PGA tournament that we would hold every year, I just, the timing just didn't work out for me to be a participant, which is fine. But the highlight for me, a big one for me this week was these women, some of these women that I'd been introduced to back in 2019 at a, at a, at an event. And now, like Kelly said, we're trying, we're finding more, we're finding more and the ball is rolling. So for me, I got to walk into the, to the house that night, you know, at the, the pickup from the airport and I get to the house and it's like, look at all these, I, I, I know you, you're my family. But then, then the arms were just welcome, you know, wide, wide, wide open. And all these yeah. women that I had never had a chance to meet, like Kelly said, Tanya said it best, um, strangers on Sunday, family by Friday. So yeah. that was pretty wow. special. I think we'll, I might have to borrow that quote for the title of this podcast, if, if you'd be so kind. And so almost just before we, almost before we go and sorry, Kelly, go on. I'm sorry. And in fact, um, I had reached out to Tanya earlier today, telling her what we were going to do. Um, she is in the middle of air vacation. She's also another superintendent. Um, and she's like, now she's back after air fight and she's texting me. It's like, am, am I too late? And I'm like, no, you might as well hop on and listen at this point. So if you get a random in your waiting room, it's Tanya, the gal that we're quoting okay. strangers on, on Sunday and Friends by Friday. So well, that's just, I yeah. told her, hey, if, if you can make this one, hop in and listen. Yeah, she can hop in. No problem. Um, I was just going to say, before we ask sort of Sally for highlight, as Renee was saying then, it, it's, it strikes me, Renee, that you were almost, you, you know, talking about setting those pins and worrying about getting them straight and painting them. I mean, that's probably why we're all in the in this industry in the first place. We started doing a job and initially we were sent out to do not basic tasks, but we were sent out to do one task and it was base, it was our job to do it well. It might be cutting the greens in the morning, setting the pins. It might be fly mowing or, or strimming round flag posts, but we... That's why we all still do it now, because we found something in the turf industry and we our careers have all moved forward and progressed, haven't they? You know, you, you women are in charge of huge properties now and managing huge staffs of people. But for the pleasure, as you described that, Rene, being able to enjoy that one job, it's really fantastic. It almost takes you back to the very start again, in, in a sense, which is wonderful to hear. Um, Sally, are you able to share one particular highlight with us uh, the, the, the ladies have explained you know how kelly's talked about that sort of camaraderie and the the, the sisters the sisterhood renee's talked about being able to enjoy that one or two specific jobs that are expected of her is it similar for you or is there anything else that you can pinpoint that really stood out for you last week well the the group as a whole i mean um anybody who you talk to will be able to, to um, it seems like nobody can put the right words on how to describe how the, how uplifting this group is um, when we get together. Um, the, the emotions and all of that stuff, that is something that um, anybody who watches us work, they can feel it and it, and it kind of emits to the other, the other help to the the other volunteers and the other crew and it just kind of is uplifting and just overall a great experience but I would say for personal uh for me my main job in the mornings during the week was uh front nine fairways so I okay. got to uh mow the fairways which for me is my favorite mowing position so that was that was uh Sally's just dropped off there a minute. She, hopefully she, she, she'll come back. Um, oh, there you are, Sally. There you are. So you, you, were, you were just talking, we just lost you for a second there, 
Sally, you were just explaining that you 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 were enjoying your your favourite mowing job on those front line fairways. Right, uh, we we're just struggling with your audio there, Sally. That's all right, no problem. Um, let's move forward. Um, and get to know you ladies a little bit better away from pine needles, if we could. Um, Kelly, you've talked about, you know, you got into golf through through playing golf and then have moved into the, the seed business. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Um, we've just, Sally's just dropped out for a minute. Hopefully she'll come back. Um, let's let's speak to, to Rene. You, you described earlier that, a sort of non-traditional way that you came into the, the turf industry. Could you just explain that to us in a bit more detail? Sure, sure, absolutely. So after going to college uh, for three years for, like I said, the, the music education, vocal performance, that type of thing, um, I, I will say I went into that with an open head and open heart. I truly thought that's where I belonged played the violin since I was three, played the piano, not very well anymore. I'm a little out of practice, but uh, played musical instruments growing up, a uh, very musical family. But the for a lot of personal reasons, the statement I think I, I made earlier maybe was I didn't have to do something just because someone else thought it was a good idea. Yeah. And I had this sort of click, you know, the light switch went off in my head. Like I, ha I, I, think, I'm, I think I'm headed down the wrong path. And I better pump the brakes right now before I get too far, too far down it. So through a lot of encouragement through my family, because I played golf, um, played golf since I was 11 or 12. My godfather taught me how to play, loved the game. I was that kid like toting my lawnmower around the neighborhood being like, give me 10 bucks and I'll mow your front yard. You know, that's what I did uh, before I even had a, a job. I was 12, 13, 14 years old doing that. So I'd always loved being outside and with the encouragement of my, you know, my family, uh, with my, with my now wife, they, she was like, you got to do it, just do it. And so my education, uh, took a turn. I took a little time off to get some things sorted for myself, but I would not change anything. I remember walking into turf school and meeting my, my professors, my program directors. And I think they thought I was crazy, but, uh, Actually, just last week, one of my former professors, the gentleman that I'm very, admi I admire him very much, uh, Professor David Willoughby, he's retired now. He made a comment on a video I posted on Facebook as like, there you go, lady. I see you. I see you. I, you know, he always believed in me. And so it's nice to see some of those types of connections come back. But yeah, it was non-traditional. But I think that that's not uncommon for women in this business because they don't know that it is a viable career opportunity. And that is one of the main things that I'll speak for myself. Kelly would probably agree with me that we want to accomplish is to help women understand that you can be successful in this business. You can have a good time doing what you like to do. And there's something for everyone when it comes to the turf grass industry. It, I mean, it's a wide open window, a wide open world to be involved and to be successful. And I think that's a driving force for some of us as far as making sure that not it's not about recognizing us but it's about having visibility yeah if if you don't see if somebody doesn't see what they could have or what they could be then maybe they won't imagine it so that's a big thing for me yeah of course and um, yeah and uh, maybe social media nowadays is 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 social media a good thing? Is it a bad thing? That's always the question, is it? But when it's used properly and, uh, and you know, the younger generation, I don't want to say kids are born with iPhones in their hand now, but they have access to tablets and the internet. And if we can promote this industry and what you ladies are doing in the right way, which I think certainly last week was so brilliantly done, then people are going to pick up on that. It only takes... I have to try and think of American ways. It only takes one girl in high school to pick that up and share it on her Instagram or her Twitter and maybe two or three of her, her friends. It might just be two or three of them think this might be an industry we can go into. So hopefully, hopefully what, what is this movement can continue to sort of snowball in, in such. Yes, Kelly. 
And, and Stuart, I love that you shared that because we had a really interesting life-changing interaction happen. Um, Jill Seymour, who is also another senior super, super superintendent out of New Jersey, she was uh, Renee's um, counterpart on the back nine, uh, cutting pins. And she had also been the one who interviewed on the Golf Channel. And we're also proud of Renee. We're always obviously proud of each other, but each of us has had these moments. And Jill's finished cutting a cup, I believe on 17, which is her finishing <laughs> hole. And there's a young woman there with her dad waiting for her and asking Jill for her autograph. Wow. After I, I'm getting chills right now, asking Jill for her autograph. And Jill, as always, is an amazing teacher. And she asks this young woman, does anyone remember her name? It's all over social media. It's going to escape me right now. But she asks this young woman and her dad to come join us for the, the, at the shop for the closing ceremonies that, um, that we were going to have. And it was so fabulous. Here she comes with her dad to hang out with all of us right before we go out for our evening duties. And now if that young woman ends up in this side of the industry because she could see it, because she saw someone and, and learned that she could be it. And like you said, that, that the shift then, and I love what you just shared, Renee, that we're, we're putting it out there no matter what your ambitions are, uh, that it, it's a viable, welcoming industry. And if anyone is interested, we suggest you give it a go. And, and that was, that was a kind of a pivotal moment for all of us that instead of that young woman asking for one of the tour players autograph, she's asking for Jill Seymour's autograph. Now, of course I had to ask for Jill Seymour's autograph because she too uh, had not given me her autograph yet. So I have it in a very special place. So I almost, almost wore my, my logoed uh, polo today, but we just met Stuart. So you know, gotta, gotta keep it a little on the calmer side today. <laughs> so Sally, if we could just come down to you, Sally, can you hear us all right down there? Yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah, no, yeah, that's um, so, so Renee sort of shared a slightly non-traditional entry or entrance to the industry. Um, you described earlier how you sort of found your way into the industry age 15 sort of picking up balls on the range and and it's been more of a traditional sort of way up you sort of picking up balls on the property and then sort of your career developing from there how have you how have you found yeah you know, have you found it I don't want to say it's sort of a lonely path as a female but have you have you in your area of the country have have you been a bit of a trailblazer in your career or, or are there are there other women doing what what you do? It's just we don't really get the chance to hear the story. Yeah, um, in Minnesota, currently, there are only two superintendents. Um, the other one lives about five hours away from me, so I've only met her in person once. A lot of other trailblazers around here. Yeah. I do feel that I am a. I have I have done this myself, um, but I have avoided uh, going to meetings and um, different outreach um, meetings or. Um, conferences and stuff due to this fact um, knowing that I'm the only female and letting it bother me it, when I have not had any reason to feel that way uh, no one individually has uh, made it made me feel uncomfortable it's just the way I have interpreted it um, so I'm changing that and it's been through all of this, that all of the support, I've, oh, I've reached out to our chapter director um, and, you know, I kind of explained my situation, explained what I, why I haven't been present in the past. And I told him I need to change that. He's encouraged me to attend a couple of events and I have. And so, but I wouldn't have been able to do that without the support of these other women and these events. Yeah, uh, I sorry. I, it's when you describe the other female superintendent as five hours away in Minnesota. For me, where I am, uh, five hours drive, I can end up in about six different countries <laughs> in five hours. Oh yeah, you, you guys don't. Yeah. You guys don't get out of a state in a 
five hours. I have a brother who recently moved to South North Carolina. Actually, he's a he's a, uh, a school teacher over there, and it, yeah, I can't still can't get my head around the vastness of your country over there. But that sounds like so. That was interesting, Sally, that you described that. You'd almost not. You hadn't made an assumption yourself, and and no one had made you feel unwelcome as a as a female superintendent in a male, as as Kelly said at the the start of the podcast. It it, it we have to describe the turf industry as a male dominated industry. I mean, the numbers don't lie. Um, it, it is male dominated. There is I, there is no good reason why it should be, and I don't think it should be. And going forward, I don't think it will be. But it's very interesting, Sally, that you described that as you'd almost you'd almost sort of made that not made that decision yourself, but that's how you felt. But but no one had had made you feel that way. So so hopefully through podcasts like this, we can encourage everyone and the, the females looking to get into into the industry that that it is a welcoming industry. I think we all know that, don't we? And all of us who've worked in it for a while. Um, so let's. Yes, we've we've gone on quite quite a long time already. We've covered a lot of what I'd set out to, but I'm just going to use it. We've used this 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 phrase, this grass ceiling, and I only started saw it pop up really Sunday or into Monday once once you once you'd finished your wonderful work at, at Pine Needles, uh, the grass ceiling had been broken. Uh, I was interested to see if if you as individuals liked the idea or if you look at it like should the ceiling never have existed um Renee could you offer a, a, a thought on this this uh breaking the grass ceiling yeah I can offer a thought on that um once again I was not involved with Olympic last year but through interaction well I've known Kelly I've known Kelly and Sally probably the longest okay. along with a couple others out of any of the women that I was with last week and through going to the national you know golf gcsa conference and show this past year i got to meet a couple other people and this term grass ceiling society came up and once i once i got it i was like oh this is awesome because there it's it takes it takes somebody to make a statement it takes somebody to make whether it needs to be made or not or it should have had to have been made it takes somebody to stand up and say nope this is it. We got this. This is who we are. This is, you know, what we, what we are looking at doing going forward. And uh, yeah, I, I will say I'm committed to that. <laughs> Excellent. And yeah. I think, I think it's fun, Renee and Sally, because they are OG grass ceiling society members and the, and the backstory Stuart is, is when I, uh, and I'm a class APJ. So another, I don't know, a thousand female members of the 27,000 male member organization and I turned pro 35 years ago so this is this is things haven't changed that much and when I came over to this side of the industry about eight years ago I would be at these trade shows that Renee speaks of and I would be standing right in the middle of the aisle all day looking waiting for one woman to walk by and that's where the grass ceiling society really took off yeah. because I already had it in the background and then I would like high five this gal who are you? Where do you come from? Hey, after this and after you're done hanging out with your customers, whatnot, uh, we're going to have, we're going to gather. And here's where we're going to gather. Please come and join us. And we just want to share. We want to know who each other is. We want to be able to lift each other up. And it wasn't anything against the guys because we love the guys, Yeah. but it was so much fun. And then all of a sudden here come a couple of gals and they'd be like, Hey, you don't mind. I brought so-and-so because I, I told her about this. And so this happened organically over the years. And I would say over the last eight years in this side of the industry. And so moving fast forward, and we actually call it endearingly, and I'm actually the one who coined Grass Ceiling Society. Like, just so you know, no one put that to us. That was okay. us. Okay. That was us from the inside. And I'm her. I am the, I am the coiner of the phrase of Grass Ceiling Society. And so now, fast forward as we sit at the Olympic Club and there are all 30 of us in the room. And I think it's uh, Marissa Marr, who's the Green Chair Olympic Club, uh, Dr. Pat Cornett, um, who am I missing, Sal's, uh, Kate Cockrell's in there, um, uh, Shannon Rulliard, and some another, the gal from Callaway that I always miss. And I swear she's going to hear me say this and she's going to reach out and be like, Kelly, you know exactly who I am. But anyway, um, we're sitting in that room 
all of us looking back at them, them looking back at us. And you should have seen them light up when they walked in a room full of 30 turf professionals, right? And, uh, and as that conversation went on that day, I thought, wow, is this the moment that we just broke the grass ceiling? And I said it out loud. And immediately Kay Cockrell was like, oh yeah. And it, within moments after she left, it was out in Twitter land. Yeah. And, and, and now fast forward, here we all are, second layer breaking the grass ceiling in, uh, in, at Pine Needles at the 77th US Women's Open Championship. And I think the difference, and I love how you shared that, Stuart, it's not a, it's not a negative connotation. We're proud of it. We're proud yeah. that we finally have this time and that space and that moment. Whether or not it should have needed to be broken, the fact that it's 2022, Stuart, and we're having this conversation, yes. right? Well, yeah. And and so I think that's our that's our privilege moving forward. Now we have uh, we once we were united, it was interesting. Like Renee said years ago, she tried this. Sally's tried this. I've tried this. It was so fascinating to us when now that we've all gathered together and we show our strength and showcase our strengths together. Now, guess who has our attention? The world, right? Yeah. So what? So what we could not do individually, we could do together. And it took all of us getting together because of Troy Flanagan, who is our utmost, we have the utmost regard for, but our biggest champion. And now, and now watch out. And it's, I can't, I always say this, I can't wait to see what happens next. And every time we go through something like this, and we're all like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what happens next. And here we are, Stuart, sitting in your studio, talking to you because yes, we caught yeah. your attention. Well, and who knows who's going to come asking since with the, they know Stuart, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, we've actually got we've actually got some sort of wonderful women in turf over in the UK. We've got like Lucy Selleck at sort of Wenvo Castle in Wales. We've got Sophie Bullpit. She's deputy, what you'd call deputy super at sort of the Berkshire. Amanda Dorans, she's into sustainability. She was at Glen Eagles. I think she's taken up a position at St Andrews. Uh, and and then there's Anna Nielsen that you might have heard of um, doing wonderful things. Where is she at? She's at the Belfry. Um, so we've got a small community and maybe, I mean, I've, I'm not in touch with any of those ladies, but perhaps there could be some sort of, you guys could hook up and put something like this together, an all-female cast uh, without the need for, well, not the need for me, but without me sitting behind this microphone. Um, I just, Absolutely. I just... Um, I was just going to ask because we're, just to, to wind this down and I don't want it to be a sort of a cheesy end or a cliche end, but would each of you ladies be able to share some advice? If I came to you first, Sally, would you be able to share a little bit of advice, not necessarily for a female greenkeeper, but a young greenkeeper looking to break into this industry if they weren't sure, what would you what would you say to them? What advice would you give to someone? Um, I guess you know, I kind of speaking from my experience is I would hate for someone to sit um, stationary because of their own demons, what's going on in their own head, and not uh, keep moving to their full potential. I mean, that's what I did um, for a long time. I, I have two kids. Um, I was living life through them. I had kind of settled in as, okay, I'm a mom now. I'm going to run to baseball games and then go to work. And that's about it. But um, now through all of this, I'm a mom and I do some pretty badass things to show my kids that they can do it too. So, um, but that is through the strength that these ladies have given me that um, has pushed me to, to, to look at life more that way and not, not as a strictly a mom from here on out. Wonderfully said. Uh, Renee, uh, some advice to a, a young person, a young lady looking to get into the turf industry. Uh, absolutely. I, in a conversation that I had with Kelly last week, one of the things that we were talking about the same idea of like, what, what can you tell somebody? What sort of, you know, nugget can you throw out there? Well, there's so many specific things that we would question, you know, how do I go about getting into school? Is it really the right decision for me? Well, I, 
I don't look like this person. This person doesn't look like me. I'm so, I feel so awkward and I feel so uncomfortable. My piece of advice, if somebody has is questioning, is this the right thing for me? Pick up the phone, but don't pick up the phone to make a phone call. Pick up the phone to look on Twitter, to look on Instagram. We talked about earlier about social media being a good thing versus a bad thing. In this instance, it is a resource. Yeah. You know, Sally is out there. Kelly's out there. I'm out there. There's a bunch of us that are out there on social media. And it's not to, like I said earlier, it's not to promote, oh, look at what we did. It's look at what we have the potential to accomplish together. Picking up that phone. Yeah, you make a phone call. That's fine. My phone number is probably on the internet in more places than I want to know, honestly. <laughs> but call me. That's fine. But, um, but I think that if people research, you know, we're here and we're here and we're available and we're obviously very communicative and willing to have those conversations to bring people into the fold. Uh, uh, so yeah, I guess that's my piece of advice. No, well, that's wonderful. Um, Kelly, uh, you're obviously not hands-on out on the golf course day to day as such, but um, would you be able to just wrap up this podcast for us? Let's not these Sally and Renee have offered some wonderful advice. Um, would you be able to sort of wrap up this podcast and what the last week uh, and the year or the year since that, what, what has the, what does this all mean to you, Kelly? Sum it up for us as best you can in a paraphrase it in a couple of minutes for us, if you could. Well, you know, Stuart, there is a thing called Kelly time. So just <laughs> we're, we're going to indoctrinate you right now. So I love that you shared all those things. And, and I have the privilege because now I'm on the, I'm on the, the, the grass seed side, right? So our grass seed is all over the world on these golf courses. Yeah. And to have the, and I, I, I has this really rich combination for me because of, of appreciating it uh, from a player standpoint, understanding it from an agronomic standpoint, and then watching it unfold right in front of me with all these, as Sally said, badass superintendents that I happen to have the privilege of high-fiving at some point along the way. But I think we have to go back to Tanya Anderson. You know, the, the, I already texted her and said, hey, you don't mind if the podcast called friend, uh, 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 Strangers on Sunday and Friends on Friday. And she just threw me all these hearts and said, absolutely. She was going to try to be here. When I told her to tune in, she was actually air fine uh, yeah. on, a, on, on her tractor. So her second quote is, um, the grass does not care who's cutting it, Stuart. Exactly. Grass doesn't care. Yeah, uh, it doesn't care if you're male or female. There's no, there is no grass has no privilege other than the fact that it wants to grow and it wants to perform, right? And I thought that's another Tanya Anderson quote that we had to take away because the gift that we we all gave each other, right? We come from really unique backgrounds. We come from really unique opportunities. We all had this winding road that led us to where we are. The unique thing now is that we're not on that road alone. And, yeah. and when you're alone, you can run fast, but when you're together, you can run far. And I think what you're proving today is that together we're going to, we're running far and whether it's, it's the, it's the awareness, whether it's the opportunity. And I'd love to share with you, I was on a zoom with another group earlier today from one of the experiences that we had last year. Uh, one of these gals is on her way uh, to a new job because of it to wow. a big job because of it. And if you talk to probably three or four or five or six in this group, they've all moved on to big jobs, including Renee Gard. Not that you didn't have a big job before Renee, right? And so we're also experiencing what's happening next. These gals are getting the interviews. They're getting the big jobs. They're being able to, to go into the to parts of these arenas, arenas that had not been open perhaps before. And so not only are we watching it unfold right in front of our eyes, you know, we're, we're still being able to participate in it actively. And I think that's what we invite all to, to do, to recognize the fact that, albeit that the women are being lifted up right now, because we've been somehow um, able to all get in the same space and to be recognized for that. But if you didn't see it before, um, the first thing we did, because we knew the stage, and, uh, and I will give a, a shout out to Alex Hills, she uh, wanted to uplift Grady Strong. 
right? Yeah. Um, and if you're not familiar with Grady Strong, I'm happy to fill you in, but no, I'm, here I'm, was our- Yeah, quite familiar with very, the story. Quite familiar. So guess what? Alex said, hey, why don't we all get t-shirts? Why don't we all donate to the cause? And the very first day when we show up, we're all gonna be wearing Grady Strong. Yeah. And immediately, uh, Corey with Rainbird reaches out and said, we picked up all the t-shirts. What else do you need to get this off the ground? By the time we got there, I think just amongst the 30 of us, we'd already raised like $1,250 to wow. go right directly, just from us personally, to go to, to, to Grady and his family. And so I think that's the other side that you're going to see is, yes, we have our voice and what we're going to do within the industry, but what can we do to lift others up? What can we do to, to share this message and knowledge? Because it sh there isn't just us and it's not just our industry, but can we be a voice? Can we be an inspiration? inspiration a place that uh, people are encouraged and people are not afraid to come and ask and have a conversation like you are Stuart you're lifting us up because you saw us from far away and yeah. I feel like that that's what happens next and so if we had to if I had to roll it all up into one it it may no matter what has happened historically we can look at right now which we call the precious present it's a great book look it up and then what happens next? Because we had to go through all of that to get where we're going. We're living in the precious present right now. And I can't tell you what a treat it is for me to sit here in this room with you and Sally and Renee, some OG homegirls of mine that, um, that we get to do this together, right? And then what can we do now to make sure that all the gals that you speak of in the UK are part of this, that this is a yeah. global movement because there aren't that many of us, but what if, the number doubles in the next two years. Wouldn't that be something? What if one one person said, you know what, I want to be that, then it would be worth it to all of us. And I think the, the gift that you're giving us is we can splash this out there all around and you're going to help us take it around the world, Stuart. And, wow. and like we say, uh, get in, it will be fun, I promise. <laughs> well, I mean, me and my co-host, when I'm working on my sort of addiction recovery podcast that I do away from the turf industry, we always say every episode, if we can help reach out and touch one person with one episode, then we have done more than our job. And if this I will email this to bigger. I will email this to all everything on my side of the water. Uh, and we will push this as much as I can across the socials and we will get it shared. And yeah, if we can get, you know, I have a, I have a six year old daughter. She's probably a bit young to be watching this, but you know, there's, if we can get it out to those 16 year old girls in the UK, Greenkeeping, and uh, Renee said at the start, "Hey, I, I need to be outside. There will there will be people, not just young men. There will be young people who who want to do this, but probably or or would be very good at doing this for a profession, but simply don't know it exists. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have had conversations with people about how can we be better at getting into." we call them secondary schools in the UK. Can we target that 16 to 18 year old demographic? Can we at least just make them aware that it is something you can do? You know, a lot of greenkeepers in the UK, they're either, I don't want to say failed golfers, but they, 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 they had, they had a golf background and they stumbled into the greenkeeping shed, mm -hmm. but it's the people who don't play golf. They don't stumble anywhere near the greenkeeping shed because they're nowhere near the golf course. They simply know the don't know the profession exists, but hopefully this podcast will shine a light on what you wonderful women are doing. Um, at the start of the podcast, I forgot to run my usual like rates and reviews. So I'll just sneak that in now. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, could you please like this, this individual episode and subscribe to the channel? Uh, if you've listened to us on a podcast provider such as Apple, Google, Amazon, Spotify, all the big ones. If you could like the show, follow the show and offer us a five star review, that would be fantastic. All it leaves me to do is say thank you to Kelly, Renee and Sally. Thank you so much for joining me on Hemi Weston's Old Mate, the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you.